Hey, what's going on, everyone? Today, we're diving into something fresh and exciting in the world of Assetto Corsa, the Swarm V2 car pack. This isn't just any car pack, though. It's quickly becoming the talk of the community, and I'm here to share why it might just be the best car pack yet. But before we jump in, I just got to say one quick thing. The discussion around car packs for Assetto Corsa can get pretty serious, with a lot of people having pretty strong opinions, which I totally understand. So with that in mind, I want to take a little bit different of approach today and share not just a typical review, but a journey, and specifically my journey through IRL drifting, sim drifting, and especially my experiences with various car packs in Assetto Corsa. So with that out of the way, throughout this video, I'll be playing some footage from my Twitch stream showcasing the car pack in action on our server. If you're interested in joining in, all the links you need to hop in the streams, join in the Discord, download the car pack, or drift on our server are down in the description. And for those of you that want to get straight into the specifics, feel free to use the timestamp section in this video. Without further ado, let's get the show on the road as I take you through my personal journey and highlight why the Swarm V2 car pack is making major waves. Let's rewind a bit and dive into how I got involved in drifting on Assetto Corsa. It all started with real life drifting back in 2016. I was hitting the track almost every month until about early 2020 when I ultimately made the decision to sell my drift car. That said, a couple years later, that familiar itch for drifting resurfaced, but this time I turned to the sim world because let's face it, it's cheaper to crash a virtual car, right? I know that's a joke, but if anyone's curious, after crashing multiple drift cars, it is in fact much cheaper. Anyway, I started out with a game some of you might know called CarX using a Thrustmaster T300 as my wheelbase. It was fun for a while, but I soon found myself craving something more authentic, something that captured the feel of real drifting, and that's what ultimately drove my decision to jump into Seto Corsa. Initially, I dove into the WDTS car pack, highly recommended by everyone online for its realism. And to be honest, it was a pretty rough start for me. My bad habits from car X meant I had to practically relearn drifting from scratch, which was crazy for me because I had real life drift experience. Thanks for that, car X. Frustrated, I had to take a break from a set of Corsa, but when I returned, I gave the Gravy Garage Pack a shot this time. Despite some criticism that the community gives it, the Gravy Garage Pack was a game changer for me. It not only helped me get back to the basics and dial in my settings, but it also made drifting genuinely enjoyable. Once I felt more confident, I revisited WDTS and finally understood why it was so praised. However, it wasn't long before I felt that it lacked the punch I was looking for, even when drifting online with other people. More importantly, it didn't quite recreate that grassroots, raw, and more gritty feeling I was looking for. During a stream, I was sharing some of these thoughts and someone suggested the Death Wish Garage Pack. It almost hit the mark offering the extra power I was looking for and had that similar planted feel of the WDTS car pack. However, we encountered issues with the server stability when having high driver counts, which made it nearly undrivable at times, leading us quickly back to WDTS. A few weeks later, another suggestion came, why not try the Swarm Pack? Initially hesitant, partially because I thought the name was sort of weird, trying it out turned out to be one of the best decisions I've made. It checked all the boxes for me, power, sound, and most importantly, that raw gritty essence, that mere drifting on a real track. Also, just as a side note for anyone curious, Swarm actually stands for Shitty Wheels and Racing Mayhem, which is actually hilariously accurate. Now that we've dived into my journey with sim drifting, let's dissect why the Swarm V2 pack has become my go-to choice and why it might just resonate with you too. One of the standout features of the Swarm V2 pack is its dedication to recreating the real life drifting experience. Each car is crafted not just to perform, but to embody the spirit of grassroots track days, those thrilling drift sessions with friends. It's about capturing that authentic vibe, making each drift session feel like the real one. Another important note, at the time of making this video, this pack features 22 unique cars, each with their own unique handling characteristics. This variety ensures that everyone can find a car that suits their style. This includes cars you typically see on the track like a S13, 14, 15, IS300, Slash Alteza, 350Z, E46, but also some less common ones like a C5 Corvette, Mustang Foxbody, and even a Holden Commodore. More than just vehicles, these cars are based on actual drift cars from the Swarm team members, adding a layer of realism and connection to the real drifting world. I also feel that sound plays a huge role in immersion, and Swarm nails this with a sound set that enhances the raw excitement of drifting. However, it's worth noting with that some cars, especially those with RB engines, can be a little loud. That said, a quick tweak in the game audio settings, this can balance out and make it a non-issue. As far as grip goes, 
The cars in this pack strike a perfect balance between grip and maneuverability. They don't just slide around, they behave like true drift cars should, with predictable handling that mimics real life cars. This realistic grip model means that they don't feel overly slippery or difficult to control at high angles, but also don't drive themselves and force active driving. For tuning, out of the box, these cars are nearly track ready. Unlike other packs where extensive tuning is necessary, in my experience, you really only need to adjust the gear ratios to fit your driving style. This accessibility makes a Swarm V2 ideal for newcomers to sim drifting, removing barriers to enjoyment, and letting players focus on getting out there and sliding. Now let's talk power. Most cars within this pack have horsepower ratings in the 450, 550 horsepower range, but they're also equipped with the modifications you'd expect to see in a more seasoned drift car, arguably somewhat close to cars you'd probably see in a pro spec competition. They also feature realistic turbo lag, Adding to the authenticity, but requiring a bit of an adjustment from the driver's side, it's a nuanced take on power that respects the learning curve without compromising the thrill. Lastly, Swarm demands your attention and skill. This isn't about casually spinning around a track, it's about mastering your lines and really driving the car. While some might expect the door-to-door -door precision of Formula Drift, grassroots drifting is often more about personal skill and car control, and that is exactly what Swarm encourages. While the Swarm V2 pack has plenty of pros, no car pack is without its challenges. Here are a few areas where some drivers might find the Swarm pack a bit tricky. Let's break down these challenges and see how they could influence your drifting experience. One of the most frequent pieces of feedback I've received from newer drivers in our community is about the initial adjustment to the Swarm pack. Unlike some other car packs that might forgive sloppy technique or offer overly assisted drifting dynamics, Swarm demands precision and understanding of drift mechanics. It's almost like the difference between an automatic and a manual transmission. There's more to manage, but also more control and satisfaction once you master it. And remember, it's okay to feel overwhelmed at first. Every expert was once a beginner. One other thing I wanted to mention here, during our busy server nights where we're close to hitting the cap of 32 drivers, I've noticed some client side strain. I've really had to work at optimizing my personal graphic settings to keep things smooth. While this isn't unique to Swarm, I did want to at least call it out in this section. For those with a high-end PC, this might be a minor nuisance, but for others, it's a balancing act of visuals and performance for this car pack. I previously spoke about sound in our pro section, but wanted to also mention it here in the con. As someone who's big on the sounds of drifting, sound discrepancies can sometimes be pretty jarring. However, if you find yourself switching between cars often, adjusting the volume almost becomes second nature. Also an important note, if you're using a newer version of CSP and Content Manager, be sure to navigate to the general patch settings and uncheck Adjust AC Reverb and uncheck Add Extra Reverb, as this can cause a lot of weird sound issues if left on. Yet another point that's also in the pro and con section, turbo lag. This is a feature I've had to adapt to personally. Initially, managing the turbo lag felt like a chore, especially on tighter tracks or when tandeming. But over time, it taught me throttle control and how to anticipate the car's response better. This realism is what makes Swarm stand out, though it might take a few sessions to appreciate fully, which is why I thought it would be good to fit here in the con section. And finally, my last con, the varying fun features like underglow and strobe lights, while really they don't affect performance, they do add some flair and personalization to each ride. It'd be cool to see features more standardized between all cars. It's a small touch, but one that ties into the broader theme of Swarm, a personalized, authentic drifting experience. Not a big deal for me, but I did want to call that out as it's something that would be nice to see. So look, we've covered a lot today, from my drifting journey to why the Swarm V2 pack is such a game changer, as well as the specific pros and cons. If you're searching for a car pack that delivers more power than WTS, but maintains that solid, reliable feel, or if you want a more authentic, raw driving experience akin to what you get at a grassroots drifting event, then Swarm V2 might just be what you're looking for. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Do you think the Swarm pack is the best pack out there? What do you love about it? Or what do you think could be better? I'd love to see a conversation going in the comments. Honestly, I'm interested to see what all of you guys think. Also, huge thank you to everyone that's watched this far. If you're interested in joining in the fun, check out the links in the description for our server, Twitch, Discord, and a direct download to the Swarm V2 pack. Last, but certainly not least, I want to give a massive shout out to everyone at Team Swarm. I feel like this is genuinely the car pack that all of us drifters in Assetto Corsa needed. Thank you to each and every one of you who made this possible. 
And for those that want to support Team Swarm, the link to their Patreon will be in the video description. Thanks again for watching, and I hope to catch some doors with you soon. Later.